Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of how to apply Stokes theorem to evaluate a flux integral. Let's suppose that v of x, y, and z is y negative x and then z x squared y cubed, so that's my vector field, three-dimensional vector field, and s is the top half of the unit sphere. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And so that, of course, just means that z is bigger than or equal to 0. Let's find the flux of the curl of this vector field. Now it's important to note that this surface is open, so we have the open hemisphere, like so. There's the z-axis, there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, and so there is the unit circle over here. That is just x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and we, our surface is just going to be the top of this hemisphere over here. So that's our surface, S, and we're going to orient the boundary to be counterclockwise. And so what we can do is we can just immediately apply Stokes' theorem. So by Stokes' theorem, this integral over here is going to be the flow integral of V over the boundary. And so now, that's what Stokes' theorem exactly says. And so now what we can do is we can parameterize this. So what we have over here, so let's write down what this is. So of course, this unit circle over here can be parameterized. Our curve C is gamma of t. It's just going to be cosine of t comma sine of t comma 0, where t goes between 0 and 2 pi. That is my boundary curve. And so let's do this flow integral. The flow integral will therefore be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And I'm going to plug in what's y equal to on the curve. y is a sine on the curve, so I have a sine of t. Then I have a negative x, which is negative cosine of t. Then I have z times x squared times y cubed, but z is equal to 0 on this curve. So this whole expression on the curve is going to be 0. And we're going to dot this with the tangent vector to the curve. This is already an arc length parameter, so t hat ds is just going to be just d, uh, this thing over here will just be gamma prime of t dt, because we're already an arc length parameter. So what's gamma prime of t? Well, we're going to get the derivative of um, the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, and the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and then 0 dt. When we dot these together, what we'll get is we'll get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then we'll have sine times sine, so we'll have a negative sine squared of t. And then cosine times negative cosine, that's negative cosine squared of t. All this is dt. Well, that term in parentheses is just equal to negative 1, so this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative 1 dt. And therefore, we get the final answer is just going to be negative 2 pi. And it's important to note that this circle is oriented counterclockwise, and that's why that's the orientation we need for Stokes' theorem. Oftentimes, mistakes that are made with Stokes' theorem is not orienting the curve counterclockwise, and the sign actually the sign error pops up frequently in these types of problems based on the orientation of your vector field and based on the orientation of the boundary curve that you're using in Stokes' theorem. Thank you very much.